The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture. We're at uh, Crop Diagnostic School at Carmen, Manitoba, and pleased to be joined by Jordan Bannerman, entomologist with the University of Manitoba. And Jordan, this is the time of year, I guess, when we start paying attention to whether there's uh, diamondback moth populations of, of significant population in our canola. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the time of year where uh, we've had some diamondback moth blow in uh, from the United States. Uh, our trapping uh, so far, pheromone baited traps, indicate uh, East Central and Eastern regions saw moderate numbers uh, blow in, uh, fewer in the West, but uh, this is the time of year where we start to kind of turn our attention to uh, figure out if there are caterpillar populations in our canola uh, that warrant concern. Okay, so what do we need to know about the life cycle of diamondback moth when it comes to spraying and making those decisions whether to spray? Uh, so once diamondback moth blows in, because it doesn't actually overwinter here, uh, there can be up to about four generations per year uh, in Manitoba. So uh, Diamondback is something that you need to scout at this time of year to establish whether or not you have populations in your canola. And then it's something to keep on, keep track of because there can be up to four generations uh, and it is something that can continue uh, you know, to potentially be a concern uh, right up until harvest. So can we assume or is it safe to assume that each generation sees an increase in population? Uh, not for diamondback moth. So, uh, in some years that may be the case but there are a number of years where uh, the first or the second generation actually is the one that is most numerous and we actually see uh, declines in diamondback populations over the year uh, for a variety of factors including weather like heavy rains um, but also there are some very effective natural enemies uh, that can do a really good job at helping control diamondback populations uh, as the season progresses. Can you expand on those the beneficials that uh, we need to consider and, and those en natural enemies to the to the pest? Uh, yeah so the, the most important natural enemies for diamondback moth are small parasitoid wasps. Uh, so diadegma and cotesia are the ones that tend that we, we think are doing the best job in Manitoba. Uh, so some of those are going to be naturally occurring here and some of them may actually blow in just like the diamondback moth. Uh, those uh, small wasps will kill the caterpillars and we've seen very high parasitism rates uh, in some years and uh, we, we wish we had beneficial insects as effective uh, for some of our other economic pests. Okay. So if we do have to spray, what are the things we need to consider maybe to minimize the impact on those on those beneficial insects? Uh, so uh, a couple kind of good uh, rules of thumb to use uh, uh, in canola or in controlling insects in canola is uh, you should attempt to avoid as best you can uh, controlling uh, or applying con products uh, to a flowering crop. If you do have economic uh, populations of diamondback or for example something like ligus uh, during the flowering phase uh, the best thing that you can do is you could either uh, select a product that is a little bit uh, easier on uh, bees and other natural enemies uh, or uh, if you are using something like a pyrethroid, uh, you could go in at as, in, as late in the day as possible, uh, which uh, is a time where a lot of those natural enemies will have already moved out of the crop environment because they're not necessarily in there all night. Yeah, and I guess stay away from flowering period too when a lot of those insects are out as well. When you can. Um, so we, we have to acknowledge the fact that on occasion, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, there are some pests that can become economic during flowering, but if you can avoid it, uh, it is best to. All right. Thanks for your time and enjoy the rest of Crop Diagnostic School Tour. Thank you.